Good morning, everyone. Medico Sil here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a final year medical student trying to make videos that are helpful and interesting to people interested in doing medicine or healthcare degrees. Today, I'm having a chat to my friend and colleague, Riley. He is a final year medical student like me. We are at UNSW Sydney in the Eora Nation, so I'd like to extend my respects to any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islanders watching and all elders past, present and future. I'll set up now and he's gonna arrive shortly. Good morning, everybody. Medico Sill here. I'm a final year medical student. And today I'm having a coffee with my friend and colleague, Riley from UNSW Sydney. We're gonna be talking about his experience as an indigenous medical student. Just for the viewers at home, do you reckon you can tell us a little bit about yourself? My name is Riley. I am a Barkindji and Dalaborn person. And I grew up in the North Coast near Port Macquarie, a little town called Kendall. But um, I spent my childhood in both Menindee, far west uh, New South Wales, which is Barkindji country and the, and the, Dal and the Darling River and uh, Dalabon country and um, in Jawan country too, I guess. So Northern Territory um, near Catherine and then basically uh, east of there. Did you always know you wanted to do medicine throughout your upbringing or? No, actually. What's your story? So, so I, I never thought that university was even an option for me, let right. alone medicine. What happened was in year nine, I went to the careers advisor and talked to him about like what I want to do, where do I want to go. I spoke with him for about 40 minutes about surf life savings. So that's something that I was really interested in. Um, I was really interested in first aid and I was interested in doing these sort of areas, but I wasn't sort of confident in myself to go to university. Um, I'm one of seven boys and I was like one of the first to go in my family to go to university. So university didn't really seem like a big option for me. Um, so in year nine, I went to this careers advisor and we talked for 40 minutes about surf life saving and, you know, possibly doing paramedics or going down that sort of route. But um, I wasn't too sure. After this 45 minute conversation, he looked at me and said, you should become a baker like bake bread in a bakery. <laughs> I didn't know who wow. he was, I didn't know who he was talking to. Because he wasn't, I was, I, I, was like, <laughs> I really want to become a paramedic. Mm, I see bakery in here. Yeah, yeah, totally, what? totally. But I think at the time, it wasn't expected for, for me, um, it wasn't expected for Aboriginal students to graduate at, at the end of year 12, or even go into university and do that sort of thing. But I don't, I don't blame him for it. Like, I mean, careers advisory isn't really a job that people aspire to do really. And it should be though. It I think should. it's one of the most important jobs in society. You started training as a baker mm -hmm. one day a week. Mm -hmm. And how did that end up in so, you wanting to do medicine? So I'm actually a fully qualified baker now. I finished the course. Um, I only, my, my original plan was to leave you at the end of year 10 and just go do baking. Yeah. But I hated the idea of doing the 9 p.m. till 4 a.m. Like baking shift or whatever it is. Wow. And God, you chose medicine, which has no night shift. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then halfway through year 12, or like maybe the start of year 12, my mum heard about this program called Winter School. And basically it's a camp for Indigenous students to see what university is like. And it's mostly like meeting students who are from, who are doing that um, degree at the moment, seeing what it's like to study, what the campus is like. You live on campus for a week and you basically just go to like, you know, a few different classes and expos and whatever. For me, this was a great, this was actually groundbreaking because I grew up in the country and we have no sort of like open day or like excursions to universities like you would in the city, right? So I didn't even think that university was a possibility because I had no idea what university was. So when I saw these students who were in these, these black students studying medicine and doing really well in medicine, yeah. I was like, this is something I can do. This is something that I can achieve. And this is something that I can contribute to to make a bigger difference than what I could possibly do in any other space that I, that I want to get into. Um, and for me, that was the most empowering moment of my life. I, I saw these students who were just excelling. And I love that. Like, how did you get into medicine? Um, so I basically heard about this program called pre-programs, the pre-medicine program at UNSW, but UNSW has there was four, I think there's five now. So it was business, law, medicine, and social work. And now we have education as well. But you do nine to five classes for three weeks and it's just like uh, labs, assignments, uh, group projects, presentation, um, exit interview with the Dean of Medicine. So there's like- Wow, with all, the Dean. Yeah, with the Dean. So you have- How was that for pressure? Yeah, it was really, it was really, <laughs> really intense. Um, but you're sort, of, you're sort of so focused at that point. You're just like, like, for me, I was just like, there is nothing I want to do more than this. And I'm just going to like put away everything else off. Right. Um, so during the program, you're hopefully, hopefully you're hyper focused into doing this um, program. So once you get to the point of meeting the dean of, dean of medicine, it's kind of like you're already in this space of just like I'm going to do this. This is what I want to do. I'm, I'm like, a, you know, you're trying to sell yourself in the way that you're 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 ready for this space. You know? All right. So then you're in the medicine program, Riley. Like, can you also tell us how your experience has been in the degree so far? It's it's been wonderful to be honest because. Oh, nice. um, 
I love learning this stuff. And that's one of the, that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned through medicine. When you see students who are um, sort of getting through the degree and like enjoying the degree, the people who are enjoying it, the ones who love the process. It isn't about like, you know, oh, when I graduate, then I'll be happy. Or when I go into this component, and then it'll be blah, blah, then I'll be happy, you know? Like, um, yeah, phase one can be hard because there's a lot of just clinical sciences and you're not actually doing any, any clinical work. You know, it's not even clinical science, it's like academic actually, science. Ac academic it's science, like, yeah. You're talking, going through degree, like studies and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, it can be really tough. Yeah, so the first two years is really just academic sciences and it can be really uh, daunting because it's like you don't feel like you're doing any doctoring at that point. Um, yeah. But after that, it can be really, it's really nourishing to be in a space where you can you can work in, this, in that area. And I love learning about this stuff. It's it's something that really does push you through when you love the process of going through these things. And it's really important because as a doctor, it's a practice. It isn't like, oh, once you graduate, then you're done. Or once you become a specialist, then you're done. Or like, you know, there's, there's just, it's never ending. It's called a practice it's a, for a reason. It's a marathon, guys, not a sprint. Yeah. So you have to love it. Yeah. Taking it back to like your medicine experience, how is the support from the university been? It was really good, actually. So we have the Indigenous programs. So the Indigenous programs um, support team have like, you know, we have tutoring, we have different like um, areas of welfare and, and um, pastoral care and that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of support in that area. But I think the most important thing is knowing that you can reach out. Um, that's probably a harder space to sort of work in because a lot of students don't realize they can. They don't feel, you know, it's like, it's the classic thing of a medicine student feeling like, as soon as they have any uh, mental health issues or as soon as they feel as if they're not doing very well, they feel inadequate and shouldn't be there or something. And to reach out is almost like a admit, admittance of defeat or like admittance Yeah, a sign of, of weakness, yeah, but weakness, it's actually yeah. a sign of strength. Totally. Um, yeah. Have you ever had to reach out? Yeah, so a couple of times, um, mostly because of trauma in the family. So things will happen like um, I've had family members pass away and I have to spend time to go see funerals and that kind of stuff and just time to mourn and times to get away from campus sometimes and get away from the city. Um, it can be incredibly difficult because your, your medicine in itself is a sacrifice. You are sacrificing constantly. You sacrifice six years of, of your life and you sacrifice, you know, the, the, the times when you should be there for family. You, you sacrifice times when you, when you want to be there for family. You sacrifice, you know, all the possibilities of being able to, to be in that space when really you have to be here. And you, you sort of, you build a resilience to it, but it's also just, it, it can be, it can be a bit of an onslaught, you know? It's like, you, do, you go into medicine because you want to help people. You go into medicine because you want to do things for your family and for your community and for your people and stuff. And you spend half your degree away from the things that uh, impact you. are doing them. it full. Yeah. Like you have family members who pass away from preventable diseases. And it's like, I'm, I've, I know all this stuff, but I can't do anything about the help it right now. Dealing with mental health and overcoming it makes you stronger and makes you a better doctor. And you, in medicine, there's a fear that like, if you don't get good marks, you can, you know, it's an extremely stressful thing. Everyone's just trying to pass. Even passing can be really tough sometimes. Um, we've just finished our final year exams. Uh, how's that been going for you? It's been really tough. Again, I had a, um, I had a couple of family issues going on. Well, this, this year in general has been really, really tough yeah. because of just, like if we started the year off with uh, massive bushfires all up and down the coast, we had COVID, we had um, all these Black Lives Matter stuff going on and like, you know, the um, police brutality of um, black people, which is, it, it's just like an onslaught of constant like reoccurring trauma or like revisiting trauma. And that was a really difficult time. In addition to that, my uncle passed away and I couldn't go to his funeral because of COVID stuff. So it just ended up being this year of just trying to block out as much as you can. Because when you're finally in medicine, you just want to get through your degree, right? You're like, you're, you're, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, so you just push and push and push. Which means you repress, you repress, you repress. Exactly. I sat the exams, I ended up failing um, sort of three components of the seven or eight components. Um, and so I'll be resitting those soon, but I'm feeling much more confident about the, the resit because if I don't pass right. the exams, it is okay because I understand that there's a lot of situational things that are going on that are impacting me and I did the best that I could yeah. in, the, in the setting that I was in. Guys, this is such an important point that like there's this incredible fear in medical students about failing an exam and what happens if you fail and do you have to redo the whole six years of medicine and that kind of stuff. The medical faculty is not here to fail you, it is here to support you and if you have a bad run, which happens to everyone, 
you don't just get kicked out of the program or anything. They, so what, what did they do? They, they offered you a reset. And when, when is the reset? The reset in November. So, so we, you just you get given a bunch of months to study for, just to restudy and revisit the yeah. content. They're giving you a bit more time to, yeah. and to it's review an, and revise. Yeah, and it's important too, because it's sort of like, you want to have a doctor who's, who's you know, qualified and who's adequate and whatever. And you sort of want to be that person as well. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. If, I, if, they, if they just like push me through those exams and went, you know what, you, you did, you know, it's a pass. Yeah, 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 borderline, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, just get yeah. pushed through. And it's like, do you want a doctor who's like, you no, know, just, no, no. you know what I mean? So it's like the idea that I, for myself, want to be, want to be, um, I don't know, I want to, I want to get the most out of my degree and I want to learn as much as I can, but I also want to be like safe in myself. Yeah, of course. And I don't know how to describe it. Like I want to be. You want to be a good doctor. Yeah, I want to be a good doctor. Yeah. I want to be a good doctor. And to just, to just, you know, just scrape through my exams is not acceptable in my mind. And I was, I was very accepting of the fact that if I failed my exams and I would reset the exams, I would work hard for the next time. Um, I live by this quote. So he says, whatever you do after you're 12, whatever path you take, make sure it's something that you enjoy, something that challenges you, and something that defies expectations for indigenous people, because your success is our success, is Indigenous people's success. We're gonna leave it there for today because I don't think my camera can handle any more data. <laughs> it's been a long and lovely yarn. Um, if you guys are enjoying this kind of content, please leave a like and perhaps even consider subscribing to the channel and leave a comment if you want us to have more chats. But that's it for this video. So thank you again and have an absolutely lovely day, guys. Bye for now. Shit.